Uh oh. Me sorprende la decisión de Sines Estrada de retirarse, pero no queda más que aceptar su decisión y le deseo lo mejor en esta nueva etapa de su vida. Todos enfrentamos momentos en los que debemos tomar decisiones importantes para nuestro bienestar. Cuando esté lista para volver, estaré encantada de darle la oportunidad de esta revancha que la gente quiere ver. Mientras tanto, yo seguiré enfocada en mis metas y con ganas de ganar más títulos mundiales. For our non-Spanish speaking subscribers, that is former unified champion Yo Costa Valle saying, I'm surprised by Senecia Estrada's decision to retire. There is only to accept her decision and I wish her the best in this new stage of her life. We all face moments when we must make important decisions for our well-being. When she's ready to come back, I'll be happy to give her the chance of the rematch that people want to see. In the meantime, I will remain focused on my goals and winning more world titles. We were definitely the kryptonite. In so many words, it sounds like Yo Costa Valle is saying the reason Senecia retired was to avoid a rematch. She posted this via her Instagram stories. That Senecia retired just as Yo Costa had become the mandatory challenger by way of all four alphabet organizations. So. Is it the way Yo Costa says it is? Did Senecia retire to avoid the rematch? I mean, no, not in my opinion. No, because there wasn't going to be one. Even if Senecia Estrada didn't retire, in all likelihood what she was going to do was vacate the titles, move up the light flyweight, and fight Evelyn Bermudez. Because before Senecia made this decision, that's what the talk was. She was going to move up and fight her for her two alphabet titles. The idea that Senecia Estrada had to retire to avoid giving Yo Costa a rematch, Yo Costa never had any real leverage to get a rematch. Not even becoming mandatory? Well, don't be naive. The most that guaranteed Yo Costa was a chance to fight for those belts after Senecia vacated them. That's the most that would have got her, but there was never any guarantee and there was never anything from the other side that suggested there was going to be a second fight between Senecia and Yo Costa. Even though Yo Costa has spent every week and every month since their fight talking about a rematch, there was never any confirmation from the other side. It wasn't gonna happen anyway. But what did I tell you after that fight? You can expect a Senecia Estrada rematch to become the biggest talking point for Yo Costa Valle, the biggest marketing angle moving forward until such a time as there is a rematch. This is how she's gonna sell her fights. And she already has a fight in the books. She already has a fight coming up, so now she'll market herself as the woman who retired the great Senecia Estrada. Super bad. Contrasting views. It doesn't matter if I agree with Yo Costia or not, because there are going to be other people that do. There were people that felt Yo Costia should have won. Yo Costia should have got the decision. Those people are going to be on board with this version of the story. They will. When the truth is, Senecia's decision has more to do with injuries she suffered before she fought Yo Costia. Injuries that didn't heal properly. Injuries that she was dealing with in the buildup of that fight. Busted right hand that never healed properly. Busted right hand that she had surgery on but still did not alleviate the pain. So you imagine trying to balance a schedule, schedule of fights, trying to get back out there and do what you need to do, rushing that hand to heal. That's not gonna make it better. Senecia Estrada is still young. 
only 32 years old. So maybe a year from now, two years from now, when the hand is fully healed, maybe she'll come back. Maybe she won't. Estrada. Maybe by then she'll be so immersed in other things, there won't be any desire, any need to come back. I heard she might go to the WWE. Estrada. I heard with the money that she's made from boxing, she's done very well for herself, owns several properties. Lars. She's a smart girl that I don't think is going to be strapped for cash and forced to come back like so many boxers before her. No. Though she will be missed. You had Katie Taylor for the Irish, Chantel Cameron and Savania Marshall for the English, Tasha Jonas too, Clarissa Shields and Alicia Baumgartner for the young black girls in America, Amanda Serrano for the Puerto Ricans, what Senecia Estrada was for the young Mexican American girls, the Chicano girls, somebody's gotta fill that void. What about Marlon Esparza? Don't be silly. Nobody likes Marlon Esparza. <laughs> So maybe Gabby Fundora can fill that void. Reigning IBF flyweight champion, or maybe an unbeaten up-and-comer, right hook Roxy. Roxana Verduzco. Maybe down the line she can fill that void and she can become that face, that person for that demographic. Maybe. There is a feeling that Senecia is leaving a lot of food on her plate because of how good she was. That she could have become an undisputed champion again and again. Maybe. But it is my understanding that the wear and tear of being a professional boxer over time and one of her more recent injuries has more to do with why she decided to call it a career than anything involving Yo Castillo Valle. That's what I was told. In men's lightweight news, at least according to boxing insider Rick Lacier, there's trouble in paradise for the upcoming Gervonta Davis versus Lamont Roach fight that's supposed to be in Houston on December 14th via Amazon Prime pay-per-view. It's in serious trouble, as Tank is demanding a lot more than the PBC is willing to pay him, resulting from serious financial woes PBC is facing these days. Let's hope they get it together. Let's hope. Let me tell you something, I don't give a shit if that fight happens or not. There's nothing about the main event and nothing about the undercard that makes me want to pay out $80 during the holiday season to see Tank fight another super featherweight. It's bullshit. I'm getting a better fight, a better main event, and a better card overall in the Fury vs. Usyk rematch. I would argue that Latino night via Golden Boy Promotions and Riyadh season next month, that's a better main event, and that's a better card overall with better matchups than what Javante's got going on. There's absolutely no reason for me to go into my wallet and pull out $80 and give it to these people, irrespective of what their financial woes are, and because their situation has changed, that they don't have the same kind of structure with Amazon that they may have had with Fox and they may have had with Showtime. That's not my problem. And I don't think there are enough people in the American boxing media pointing that out. Sympathy and a scarcity of options is not reason enough to charge the consumer $80 to $90 in this economy. It just isn't. No. What's the marketing angle? We tried to get an old Vasil Lomachenko, but he declined. That's what's supposed to sell this pay-per-view? Give me a break. Now, of course, because this is a rumor, you have to take it with a pinch of salt. We don't know with any certainty that what Rick Glacier is saying or what what he's hearing is true, but it's possible, it's entirely possible that Gervonta Davis, not getting the kind of money he wants now that the structure has changed. I've been saying it for months. You won't get with Frank Martin, and you won't get with Lamont Roach what you got with Ryan Garcia last year. That was a whale of a fight, and Gervonta likely made a lot of money, but there are not a lot of fights like that. And that's just one problem, that there are not a lot of fights that pay out what the Ryan Garcia fight pays out. Now, there are some fights that pay out better than others, fights that will pay out better than what you got with Frank and better than what you might get with Lamont. They don't pay as much as the Ryan fight did, but they'll pay better than those fights. The Teofimo Lopez fight almost immediately comes to mind. Teofimo's been calling Gervonta out. I don't even care who wins between them. Overall, you have to agree that it's a better fight. It's better than a Frank Martin fight, it's better than a Lamont Roach fight, but it might require Gervonta to return to the super lightweight division, and he doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to do anything. He's not Canelo Alvarez. You guys want to pretend. You guys want to live in La La Land like he is when he's not. You're likely thinking to yourselves, why should he have to move up for Teofimo Lopez? But is he not the same one who moved up for Mario Barrios? Mario was not a bigger name then than Teofimo is now. You make time for these rank amateurs, these guys nobody's ever heard of, these absolute scrubs, but it's too much to ask to make time 
for a Teofimo, somebody that people actually know. They know him at least more than they knew Mario Barrios or Isaac Cruz. So one of the problems is that there are not a lot of fights out there that pay as much as the Ryan Garcia fight. The second problem is this kid's got it in his head that he's like Canelo. And he's not. Third problem's the PBC's current situation with Amazon. I've been telling you all year, the deal structure is different. It's changed. PBC's not getting from Amazon what they were getting from Fox or what they were getting from Showtime. When they were in bed with those broadcasters, those broadcasters were invested in the PBC in a way that Amazon is not. Amazon is just distributing your shows, but they're not pushing them. They're not promoting them. Why do you think Javante Davis himself noticed it and said that the promotion for the Frank Martin fight sucks? He skipped the grand arrivals on that premise. It's not the same. The level of commitment, the level of push and promotion is not the same. Thus, the money may not be the same. He wants to keep getting paid the way he got paid when he fought Ryan. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. So it's entirely possible that what Rick Glacier is describing is accurate. Not simply because he's saying it, but because of these aforementioned factors. The landscape at 135, the way that Javante's navigated his career, what he's willing and not willing to do. Could you imagine how bad the optics would be if this fight fell apart on the premise that they can't get Javante the money he wants? No, I don't know that that's gonna happen, but if it did, the optics would be pretty bad. That would really herald trouble in paradise. Elsewhere in the world of boxing, Bill Haney and Ryan Garcia going back and forth on their social media. Bill Haney insisting that Ryan Garcia should sign up immediately for anti-doping testing, to which Ryan responded, Does it have to be your precious VADA, Bill, or can it be any organization? To which Bill said, King Cap, stop the precious shit. You know VADA will expose the truth and bust you in 48 hours if you're still a hot fighter. We both know why you're avoiding it. Fighters and fans deserve real answers, not deflections. I see Ryan's fans are backing him up, and I respect the loyalty, but real talk, if Ryan is as clean as you all believe, Vada testing should be a no-brainer. Devin's already signed up. Let's clear the air and put the doubts to rest. Fighters and fans deserve the truth. What is he hiding? In the effort to deem Ryan Garcia an innocent man, so many are now delegitimizing VADA as a credible anti-doping agency in spite of all the fighters that they've busted. It basically boils down to for Ryan Garcia to be innocent, somebody at VADA must be guilty. Since you're trying to point the finger at them, blame them and the Haney's. Media, it's time to step up and ask the real question. Why is Ryan Garcia refusing random VADA testing? If clean sport matters, we need answers, not silence. Let's hold everyone to the same standard and put the spotlight and accountability in boxing. The fans deserve the truth. No more dodging. I am so sick of both of these teams. I'm sick at a subject. But if there is any validity to what Bill is saying, it's true that the media needs to step up. There was a time when a story like this one would have been handled very differently than the way it's being handled here today. Is it true that Ryan Garcia is not subject to randomized testing for the duration of his suspension? Because I was under the impression that he would be. And it sounds like he isn't. And is the media going to let Ryan publicly defame and delegitimize VADA as an organization when his own accusation is inconsistent with his story. Huh? First you said that the Haney's, Victor Conti, and Vada plotted against you. Then you said the Osterin came from a contaminated supplement. But if it came from a contaminated supplement, why were you then blaming the Haney's? And why were you blaming Vada? <laughs> Team Garcia, let's not twist the facts. The WBC's clean boxing program with Vada has been in place since 2016, with mandatory random testing for top fighters to protect the sport's integrity. This isn't a new rule, it's the standard. So who's hiding? One minute you're saying that Bill Haney, in connection with Victor Conti and Vada, tempered with your samples. I mean, that's what you were implying. Then it became the osterin they found in his system came from contaminated supplements. But if it came from contaminated supplements, there wouldn't be any need for Vada or anybody else to temper with your samples. Those two versions of the story can't be reconciled, even though they both came from the same person. Which one is it? Did the Haney's in connection with Victor Conti and Vada set you up? Did they tamper with your samples or did the osterin come from the contaminated supplements that you were taking. And 
Why isn't Ryan Garcia enrolled in some kind of anti-doping testing? VADA, USADA, drug-free sport? I mean, he should be doing something for the duration of this suspension to provide assurances that he isn't doping in the off-season. What kind of message does that send? I notice that the doping bans are a lot harsher across the pond in the United Kingdom in regards to the BBBOC and UCAD, they handle that stuff over there. And if you get popped over there, you could face anywhere in between a two to a four year ban, whereas here- It's a revolving door policy over here. The media won't even ask you the hard questions. Bill continued, Ryan, faith is powerful, but it shouldn't be a shield from the truth. If there's nothing to hide, why avoid random VADA testing? Are you buying time to clean up? Fans deserve transparency, not excuses. Prove that you stand by the values you preach. Let your actions show the integrity you claim. The sport and its supporters expect honesty. No, they don't. And that's the problem. The sport and its supporters are dishonest people. This has become a game of who do you like less? Ryan or Bill? And because they really don't like Bill and they don't like Devin, they're willing to give Ryan a pass. Even if it means giving a pass to a cheater. And that's what he is. Bill's barking up the wrong tree with that one. Honesty, integrity. This is a much more cynical era of boxing than any era before it. To the point where a conversation like this one, where a fighter gets busted, devolves into something else entirely. It's not about a cleaner sport. It's about why it's all right. It's okay for Ryan to cheat because you can't trust Bill. You can't trust Devin can't trust Vada, or it wasn't the Osterin that lost Devin the fight, it was his defense. He couldn't defend against the left hook. None of which makes Ryan an innocent man. Bill said boxing deserves champions who lead by example. That's why I'm calling for mandatory Vada testing for all big fights, no exceptions. Let's raise the bar and protect the sport we love. Devin has always been ready to prove he's clean, and it's time everyone else does too. Fair play isn't negotiable, when in fact it is. Vada testing isn't cheap. And when it's implemented, it's usually either the promoters or the fighters themselves paying out of pocket for it. That's why it's not unanimous. That's why it's not uniform, because not everybody wants to. So where he's saying boxing deserves champions that lead by example, that's exactly what you're getting. Ryan is the example. That boxing doesn't really want to be a cleaner sport. The boxing fans themselves don't care if it is, so long as their favorite fighter wins and they have a, a narrative to latch onto. That's the example. The fight fans themselves have become so cynical over time they don't even know that they should take it from Bill or trust Bill just because his son didn't get caught doesn't mean he's not doping too you ask some fighters and the whole sport is doping but some of them say that everybody's on something Regis Progre was asked about it that's what his longtime trainer communicated to him the whole sport is dirty so in a situation where the whole sport is dirty why would Bill Haney be advocating for anti-doping testing to handicap the other fighter so that you guys get to use your gear but he doesn't get to use his? That's the kind of conversation it's become. It's that bent. And I can't say in today's boxing landscape that that kind of a notion is out of line.